Welcome to this care collab together with Orchidea teaming up about Sologeny Lime Bay, how we grow it in our different climates and different setups. But <laughs> can you believe it? If you have been on my channel, you know that Sologeny Lime Bay features a lot. And the reason for that is because of her growth habit, which we will get to. But on the day that I need to film her for a care collab, she isn't in bloom. <laughs> that bud did not open. I cannot push this out any further. We're just going to have to rely on all the footage that I have of this orchid from previous years. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. And should you consider getting yourself a lime bay, or if you are struggling with your Sologeny lime bay, I hope that this video is helpful. First of all, I am in southern Spain. I have very hot months of the year. I have no humidity to speak of. And in the winter, it gets rather chilly, which this orchid would prefer not to have to deal with. She has been in my collection since 2018 and has started to come onto her own. So based on my temperatures, she's pretty much acclimated and we kind of work around my cold winters and get her through them, including any buds or blooms she may have <laughs> during that time period as best as we possibly can. My temperatures here range down to 14 degrees Celsius where she lives indoors all the time up to possibly 40 degrees degrees Celsius if it is a very hot day and the hot wind is blowing into the location where she lives, which is my dining room, aka grow space. <laughs> There's no dining going on except for what the orchids get by way of fertilizer. I do have her in a very protected environment. I do not bring her out. These orchids prefer to have a lot of light but no direct sun. The leaf that you see dying back to the right of the screen, that is normal in my climate. My lack of humidity compounds the fact that my sologenies do not hold on to their leaves for very, very long. And eventually I just have pseudobulbs and a new growth with a couple of fresh leaves. This orchid would prefer to have a lot of humidity to avoid leaf tip burn from dry air. 60 on up. She is absolutely going to love that kind of humidity. Sometimes I get that humidity, but it will only last a day or two. My humidity revolves around 20%, maybe 30% on average throughout the year. Still, you can see that she is pretty tolerant of some of the adverse conditions that I've just mentioned that are not to her liking, and she will still bloom profusely for an extended period of time. And when I say that, I do not exaggerate extended period of time. As you can see, she is a sequential bloomer. This is her second spike. Since 2020, I've been cultivating her first spike. And I say first and second spike because depending on the season and her new growths, I consider them first and second spike. She has bloomed before on this growth and this growth, and those spikes have died back over an extended period of time after the spike is depleted. So can you believe it? She starts out with a very skinny growth, and just like psychopedalums, selogenies give us blooms if they're going to bloom before a new growth even matures. The spike will form as the new growth is still developing in its own right. The maturer this orchid will get, hopefully I could get another growth going. That would mean then I would have two spikes on the go at the same time, as opposed to cultivating one spike over the period of time and eventually based on the season, a new growth starts, individual new growth. If there were two more growths coming, all of them would bloom and one by one, you would have a much more impressive bloom display. Unfortunately, mine hasn't gotten to that point yet. I'm gonna think positively because even the last time that she had two spikes on the go, I lost the first spike after the spike had bloomed to the 13th bloom. This time around with these two spikes, I managed to hold on to her first spike. We got to bloom 15 and then the 16th bud failed. So that was the end of that. And very, very quickly after that, the spike started to absorb itself. At this point, I can cut the spike off, but I wanted to show it in the video because now this will be our main spike and the idea is to hold on to this spike and get it to bloom for as long as possible. Maybe get down to the 16th bloom 
seeing as every year I am trying to increase the length of time a spike will bloom. And in order for them to be able to have the energy to grow a new growth to a substantial and significant size, plus continuously bloom and not have them abort their spikes, these orchids need a lot of fertilizer and they need a lot of water. For that reason, my setup is Lekka and self-watering. I repotted her in 2020 and according to my golden rule, I normally repot every two if not three years because even though my media is inorganic and won't break down, the climate of the pot always has to have enough oxygen flow going through it to keep the root ball healthy and not let it die. It works to some degree but once again my very dry humid climate makes for a dry top layer and sometimes I have roots failed. This orchid requires a lot of water when in active growth because a lot of energy is being consumed at the same time for blooming as well as developing the new growth. I flush this orchid every single time prior to me doing either a supplemental soak or putting new fertilizer into the reservoir. I never let the reservoir go dry on this orchid during her growing period. By the time the winter comes around, I continue my flushing as per once a week, just to keep the oxygen exchange fresh in the pot. But I do not fill the reservoir with any water because again, the evaporative cooling of my setup is going to cool down the roots even further. So I eliminate any water in the reservoir after flushing her and she is okay for another week before flushing her again. I very, very rarely fertilize during the winter because her main growth spurt happens now during the summer and into late fall while I can fertilize heavily. If I add something during the winter, it's calcium and magnesium to maintain that spike. I don't put any seaweed into her during the winter. Calcium magnesium at 60 parts per million will go as a soak only, after which I will flush the orchid and then again leave the reservoir empty. So it's a bit of a dance during the winter to keep this orchid happy and not have the roots decay because of the cold. My ambitions to maintain a spike make me use the calcium and magnesium just so that she has something. And if you don't water this sologeny enough, then at some point your leaves, I can show it on this one, will crinkle up like this right at the start because that is really when they want a lot of water in their root system as they start to get going, seeing as they're forming the spike at the same time. So if you see your leaves doing this, then that means there's not enough water. Even giving more water after this has happened will not eliminate the crinkling of the leaves, but at least the rest of the leaf will then grow nicely and normally. And when I speak of fertilizer right now, she gets 300 parts per million, even though she's only pushing one growth. And I do that every time she has her reservoir absorbed. I never let the root ball dry out. There is microfiber in that pot so that there's plenty of wicking. Now, I have to circle back to what I said about repotting when she was repotted two years ago. I'm going to extend another year on this orchid and not repot her in my two-year cycle. Instead, because of her fine roots, she has plenty of aeration in the pot. They are not taking over that pot as quickly as a chunky rooted orchid would. So I'm perfectly fine with giving her another year in this pot. And it is possible because of how fine the roots are, I could leave it up to a fourth year. Right now she's getting a silicon supplemental soak and when I filled the pot I had a lot of bubbles, a lot of gargling and that means there's plenty of oxygen exchange in that pot so I am in no hurry to repot this orchid. I could possibly extend it even to a fourth year. The silicon I've got in there is something I do every summer with all of my orchids. It's a hundred parts per million just to give this orchid an extra boost because of the inorganic media that she is in. With inorganic media there is no little trace minerals of silicon so throughout the months of May, preferably April, all the way up to September, depending on the weather, October, once a month, a silicon soak is sufficient. My soaks can last anywhere from 30 minutes minimum up to, oops, I forgot I was soaking my orchid, so I don't have a time frame. Seeing as my roots are in a constantly wet environment, they are not going to die simply because I forgot that I have an orchid soaking. But a minimum of 30 minutes, that is sufficient for any soak. 
And while the reservoir always has fertilizer in it during the growing season, my supplements will always be on a soak basis because I can target the pH directly for that moment in time, which would be 6.7 calcium magnesium for the purposes of blitz absorption at 6.7 is best absorbed by the roots. And then my fertilizer sometimes goes in at 5.8 pH and then sometimes at 6.3 pH because pH swing, the different pHs also allow access for different minerals to be absorbed, especially the micronutrients. They are best absorbed at a lower pH. When it comes to pests, I cannot complain about this orchid. She is a very proliferous happy sap producer on her spikes and buds. Sometimes I might get some ants finding her despite where she lives. That's crazy that they even get all the way up there and all the way down to the buds. But mealybug scale and all the other horrible creatures like thrips that would do a number on the leaves have not found this orchid thankfully every once in a while i do a maintenance spritz of garlic alcohol but other than that thankfully this orchid gives me no issues with any form of pests we are on bud number three which i hope will open probably tomorrow as they do <laughs> but because i moved her because of filming it's possible this bud may blast but it has the fourth bud already developing in the back and that little protective cap for bud number three, that's about to fall off eventually. And now I've got sticky fingers. But anyway, yeah, so Selogeny Lime Bay has never really given me any issues. It's just the winters. I have to be careful during the winters. I do not supplement with a heater or heat mats. I need to work with the orchid based on the temperatures and what I can provide at that point in time. The most important thing in this setup is keeping the root ball healthy by flushing and allowing for oxygen exchange in the pot and supplementing while she is growing a new growth and a spike at the same time, supplementing with calcium and magnesium. Bright shade, no direct sun. I wouldn't necessarily say it's an easy orchid to take care of, but once I've figured her out, I now have no problems and we get along well together, except that she's denied me a bloom on filming on the day of the care collab. Huh. Just telling me who's the boss here. <laughs> I hope that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for clicking on it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. If I didn't circle back on a thought, I'd be happy to elaborate on any care. Specifically, even if you've got yours in organic media, we can discuss all of that in the comments. I'm wishing you a beautiful, beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.